Hey, Bibi, how you doing, Turbo? It's a nice day, isn't it, Turbs? Hey, hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? If you're doing well, I'm great. It's a gorgeous day outside. Been loving sitting out here watching the pollinators flutter all over the flowers that put together in the last video. The tiny little, itty bitty little butterfly there. Can we see it? Can we get close enough? Nope. It's that time of year. I've been tying up odds and ends. There's still a few planters left that have yet to be done now that it's almost September tomorrow, right? First day of September. I have these two gigantic planters down here, the Miami planters. You know, we don't need a big buildup. I'm sure it's in the title of the video. Y'all know what's going on here, right? Time to plant up the Miami planters. That's what the, these are called, the Miami planters. I'll get to the weeds. I've been sp they won't pull up. They're rooted way down there. I keep pulling them, then they come back, and then I pull them, they come back. So I've been hitting them with dead bro about once a week, and it's starting to kill them off. I think it's killed them off enough that I should be able to go in there and cut them back. That's not neither here nor there. The planters here, aren't they, they just, isn't they beautiful? You know, it looks like they're planted up. They're not, these are just hanging out in there. They can't stay there. They're not gonna work in these containers. These are the Miami planters from Le Boo. The bow, that French word right there, 36 inches high, 24 inches across. I have wanted these for years and I finally went ahead and got these this past spring and I still haven't planted them up yet because I overdid it in my head and I was like, whatever goes in these has to be absolutely perfect. It has to be the most beautiful thing ever. Check myself out. I wanted to get these planted up though with really large established plants and I just wasn't seeing what I wanted. However, a couple weeks ago I went by a nursery called Plant Haven. There's a turbo up there sticking his head through things. Tropicals were on clearance. They're like 75% off. I picked up some nice big established plants and I want to go ahead and go ahead and get these potted up and then talk a little about cash potting. Now where you put a pot inside of another pot. Just a couple little things to no effects. I get asked about it fairly often. And the reason that these impatiens don't work here. This side of the steps very very shady. This side gets more sun. It's not full sun but it's part sun. Hit part sun right there and deep deep shade right here so anything that flowers it's not going to look even right the one that's in more sun it's gonna be a more full robust looking plant with more flowers and then the shade more stretched out with less flowers there are plants that can go sun or shade but the growth habits just going to look different on them so i was happy that i finally found some plants that are more foliage forward so i'm not going to have to be too concerned about making sure that the growth stays even on especially this time of year right because there's only like six weeks until I'll have to take these apart probably. It's about when our first frost is around mid to late October, so six to eight weeks. I've already filled these up about three quarters of the way with all-purpose potting mix. I also have some weight in the bottom of these to help keep them from blowing over. I don't think that's going to be an issue with what I'm putting in here though. Pardon the mess. I keep blowing the deck off and then it rains. Then I blow the deck off and then it rains. I mean, we're outdoors, right? There's leaves, I have neighbors, their trees are messy. There's just gonna be stuff on the ground sometimes. Since it is so late in the year, like I said, six to eight weeks of time to have anything in these containers, and I'm not into fall arrangements, so I'm not gonna be doing any fall type of thing in here. I want them to have some nice big tropical plants in them. I'm not going to, let me grab the plant and we'll talk about some more. The first plant, I should say, where we get a nice big view of these when they're put together. I don't think it makes sense to actually unpot them and plant them up inside these containers. It's not gonna be that long, so I'm gonna wanna pull these out and move them inside for the winter time. So the majority of what goes in here, they're just gonna be hanging out in their containers with some soil built around them. So that's the whole catch pot idea. A catch pot is just a pot that you set another pot inside of. I suppose this is a little bit different since there's going to be soil in here. So the only thing I wanted to really mention with that, well, there are a couple things. First of all, I do wanna clear out some of this lower foliage because I know what I'm planting in here with this plant is going to kind of smother into there. And these are plants right here, Cordelin fraticasa is what this is. They're very prone to mealybugs. I don't want a lot of hiding places down in there where there's a lot of dense foliage from the other plants that are surrounding it. With the cash pot though, this pot looks like it's okay. The hole is right there on the corner. That's where I like to see drainage holes. Sometimes with these growers pots, the hole will be up higher. If that hole's up higher, that's going to be a problem for drainage. I mean, hopefully there's a hole in the bottom. There is on this one. Sometimes there isn't. It just depends on how the grower's doing things. If they're like using flood irrigation, sometimes those holes will be up a lot higher because they always have water moving through them. If that's the case, take a pair of clippers or scissors, go around to the corner of the bottom of the pot and make a cut, get a hole done in there so that water can move freely from 
that part of the pot so it can get out more easily. So that was the main thing. It's just all about drainage. Want water to be able to move freely through this pot and out. It's not going to be the same as when the container is just sitting out on its own because there's more pressure around it. So water is going to move more slowly out of the container because of all that soil built up around it. Having the extra drainage in the containers is just a good idea. It's an extra measure to put in place so that things don't get too waterlogged and the plants don't end up like getting root rot and dying. So there's the first plant, isn't it pretty? That's a Cordelin Fruticasa, probably a red sister. The pot's not labeled. The plant's not labeled, I should say, so I don't want to say for sure what it is because I could be wrong. There are a lot of Cordelins that have very similar foliage and growth habits, but we'll just go with Red Sister because if you want one that looks like this, I'd say that'd be the right one to look for. This being a 24 inch pot, I can easily fit another 10 inch container in here and maybe another six inch, I think. Let me see. And I want these containers to have some growth that comes over towards the steps on each end so it'll look like things are growing towards the steps. For that, I'm going to use this Alpinia Zerumbut Variegata. Got some mealy bugs on us that time of year. Start soaking everything with the oils. Look at that. Didn't take much. It's already looking beautiful. Just two plants. Isn't that awesome? I can do more though, right? Need to do more. For one, need to make sure everything's angled in the right direction. Want to make sure that that growth is coming out that way. And then just to break things up between the ginger and that cordelin, I'm gonna pop in this curcuma ginger right here. That looks nice, just some solid green. Solid green with those beautiful purple flowers. Leaf shape being similar, not crazy about it, but they all have a different growth habit. This has some flowers on it, which is nice to get some more color, because that's what this needs is more color. And most importantly, it's the only other thing I have two of out here, so it's gotta work, right? And then down the front, have to have a trailer, and the only thing I've been able to find anywhere at the nurseries this time of year, is a creeping Jenny. It's a little rough looking, but give that some time, lots of water, it's gonna be looking fine very, very soon. That Creeping Jenny is the only plant with this entire time I knew that I had to have those in these containers because I love the way their leaves look against the blue on these pots. They have a tight habit, the way they trail, and they're simple, and it'll come back next year. Not if I leave it in this little pot, though. This is the one plant that I do need to unpot and get some soil around it because, well, it's a big plant in a little pot, and big plants in little pots that like water don't do that great, right? So I'm gonna squeeze that in there and then come through with some all-purpose potting mix. Fill in the gaps in here around the entire pot. Let's put a drip head in here, probably a sprayer so it'll evenly get everything and plant up the other one and let's see how they look. Oh, uh, what do we think? I like it. Not a fan of the mess on the ground, but things will dry up and I'll be able to blow the area off and that won't be an issue anymore. The only reason I backfilled these, I guess I should say there are a couple reasons to backfill the containers, even though there's not a lot of root contact because of the pots. The Creeping Jenny, so that needs soil around it. And if there was more wiggle room with these plants in these containers and having them backfilled would help hold those plants still. It'll help with moisture retention and it will also help stabilize the plants, the ones that you have that are potted inside the pot. With the Creeping Jenny, it's just, you know, it's a plant that needs needs dirt or else it'll die. And I did make sure to use the ginger over here that's already in flower. I had two, obviously, because, you know, there's one over there and one over here. One of them wasn't in flower. That one's getting more sun. It'll get enough sun to go ahead and start flowering. This one, I'm not so sure there's enough sun over here to keep this one flowering. These flowers last a pretty long time on these plants, so I would say those should be there for the next several weeks. May not push out new ones but since it's already started to flower, we're good. There's at least something there to look at with those pretty flowers. I have some other plants kind of just hanging out around the sides of the pots. I don't know if I'm gonna leave them there like that. Like right here, I think that that looks nice. The variegated sun and patient with a red button ginger behind it. Looks cool, naturalizes things. Sort of jungly, a little bit messy, but again, I can fix that when things dry out some. But over here on this side, Eh, I'm not liking it as much. I don't like seeing that white pot. So, I don't know, that's something to think about. That was just me playing around with some plants, moving some things around for right now. Just wanted to get these done. I'm so happy to finally have these planted up. One of the issues I was encountering with picking up the plants to go inside of these gorgeous containers, love these pots so much, other than the sun, which we already talked about, the issue is that each one of these containers has a backdrop with these honeysuckle vines in them. That one the support broke on, but normally it's 
a few feet taller. We need to get that fixed. All kinds of projects around here. Never a shortage of projects. I wonder if we've just tossed in some like cheap majesty palms or just anything green. I really feel that it would have been lost because that green backdrop and all the shade that's back here. So I really want to make sure that what went in these pots was colorful and bold and would stand out. And I would say that definitely pulled that off. I love, out of all the plants in here, the Creeping Jenny is just what's really making me happy. That's partially just because the Creeping Jenny in these containers will be more perennial. Hopefully, usually it overwinters just fine in containers here in Zone 6. Stay semi-evergreen, they'll die back some during the winter time and then rebound and start growing again in the spring. So whatever I keep putting in these containers, I already have a trailer coming over the front. It'll just get more big and bold. Not likely to ever get to a point where it's going to take everything over and hide the pot. That was another important thing with these containers is I didn't want to use a trailer that was going to come over the front and hide the entire container, like a sweet potato vine. Great plants, they're cheap and they really fill out quickly, but they had the containers. For example, you see this and over here, there's some gorgeous pots underneath those gigantic sweet potato vines. And those are the Sweetheart Caroline, some, one of the ones that's supposed to say smaller. So that's the smaller of the sweet potato vines. And yeah, you can't even tell if there's some gorgeous, beautiful blue pottery underneath those. So that's, I think this is perfect. I love it. And once the forecast is starting to look like there's going to be some frosting, just come out here and lift these right out, shake the dirt off the sides, probably give them a rinse. And take them inside makes it nice and easy if it were earlier in the year then i would have planted them directly into these containers because it makes it a lot easier to keep them watered going to get more growth out of them that way that's not not what's going on i think this worked out well i think a croton would have looked awesome right here but i was working with what i already have around in addition to the few plants that i picked up the cordelin and the ginger and the creeping jenny over the front crotons would have looked cool there but this is good too i think it's nice that pot right there is bugging me looks good right here doesn't that look nice Right there with the ginger and the sun impatient. But then you look over there and it's just like, meh. That's, that's a mess. I love how they look. Some impatients, regular impatients, not sun impatients, I do think actually would have done fine in these containers. It's too late in the year to go ahead and bother with planting any of those. I don't think I could even find any for sale. I probably, I'm sure I have some left around in a six pack somewhere, but they're not going to do much over the next few weeks. So just don't see a reason to bother with it. The sun impatience, sun or shade, but like I mentioned, they're just not going to look the same. They're not going to look even. That one over there would be more full with lots of flowers, whereas this one's going to be more stretched out and lanky. The regular impatience, I think, probably would do okay. All right, okay, so I need to do something about that. Wasn't stable, apparently. I had some impatience that I tucked over here just kind of for jits and shigs. I wanted to see how things would do in this corner because I've never really had annuals in this spot, and I might be adding a perennial shrub hedge over here next year so this is just throwing some cheap annuals in the ground seeing what they do to help give me a better idea of what the light's capable of over here and the impatience did grow not much they're back there with more shade but they did grow and i think if those caladiums weren't there they would have grown some more and the same thing on the other side they're impatience over here too but they're hidden by caladiums they did okay which means in these containers where they're further forward would have done fine too that's enough but that's okay they're done don't need to talk about it anymore Comment down below, say hi. Love talking to everybody. How are things going in your garden? You doing fall things? I'm not. I very easily toss in some ornamental grasses, some cabbages and kales and some kind of dichondra or the creeping jenny and mummed it up and pansies, whatnot. That's just not the vibe I was feeling for these containers. They needed big leaves, big tropical leaves, and that's what we got here. Hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life, and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.